After getting some rest, you have managed to recover your health. Death by chocolate. A soft light is pouring in from outside. You should hurry to school. Morning! Oh, Joshua Coon. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. The weather's great today. It's even a little warm, don't you think? Mm. I saw on the news that the first official spring storm was observed this morning. Spring is just around the corner, huh? Mm. Spring, huh? Everything went by so fast. What's up? Hey, everybody. What's going on? Mm. Oh, nothing. We're just talking about how spring's almost here. Then Joshua Kuhn will... Hmm... Uh, yeah, I try not to think about it. But hey, we still have some time, right? No gloomy faces until then. Let's have fun. <laughs> yeah, we're going to pack your brain so full of good memories that you'll beg us to stop. Oh, shoot. Well, let's go. Let's go, man. What? Hey, wait for me. You have finished packing. You will be returning to the city in two days. You decide to rest for today. Spring has once again come to Innova. Dojima residence. Tomorrow is finally the day you will part with everyone. All done packing? Well, if you forget anything, I'll mail it to you. Can I go answer the door? Oh, yeah. That's right. Sure. Go answer it. There's nothing to worry about anymore. Seeing her so cheerful like that, nothing makes me happier. I already bought your train ticket for tomorrow. It leaves at 9 o'clock in the morning from Yasuita bus station. Today's your last day here. Don't worry about Nanako. You can leave her to me. Go see your friends. This might be your last chance to talk to them. This is the last day you will be spending in this town. You should wander around for a while. Are you going out? Be careful! I just went to visit my husband's grave. Then I came to look at the river like I did last time. <laughs> Next thing I know, here you are. There's a surprise. I live with one of my kids and my grandchild now. They're all so kind. I just realized that I almost never talked about my kids with you. I probably dis distanced myself from the rest of my family. 
I was afraid that I, that if I didn't, I was going to depend on them. They're living their own lives. I didn't want to be a burden on them. So I wanted them to forget about me, to treat me as if I was dead. But they welcomed me, and now we live together. They take care of me, but I'm taking care of my grandson. <laughs> so there's a little bit of give and take there. There really is a place in the world where I belong. I just assumed that there wasn't one. They're my children, my family. I regret that I didn't talk with them before. My husband's death must have been sad for them too. After all, they lost their father. Are you happy now? Yes. Very much so. I'm so happy right now, but because of that, I feel sad every now and then. I can't help but think he must have wanted to feel this happiness too. So I've decided that the best thing I can do is live a long, happy life. I'll make the rest of my life as great as it can be, and then I'll tell my husband about it when I see him again. Then we'll have all of eternity to be happy together. I'm not afraid anymore, just a little lonely. I'll also have to tell him everything that happened in town, too. About this whole crazy year, those awful murders, and how the police solved the case. I'll definitely have to tell them all about you, too. I recently realized something. Precious things that remain precious, whether they're alive, whether you're alive or dead. <laughs> Sorry for making you listen to all my long-winded monologue. You look like you still have things left to do. You look like you've grown up a lot, Joshua Chan. You're much more handsome now, too. Not as handsome as my husband was, though. I'll see you again. Well then, take care of yourself. You still have a lot of life ahead of you. You feel a close bond between Hasano and yourself. Hasano left without looking back. You have come. I was waiting for you. I wanted to see you before you left. Though, parting words aren't what I have for you. Remember, the heart is shaken more by a single action than a thousand words. Do you know what action will shake both of our hearts? A goodbye kiss? Oh, please be a goodbye kiss. <laughs> For us residents, I'm sure this is a sin. Now, close your eyes. Why, you ask? So that you don't witness my sinfulness. Mm. Wow, they actually animated it in everything. You feel a solid bond between you and Margaret. Why did I steal a kiss? Is that what you were going to ask? But it's you who was the thief. <laughs> Will I ever see you again, I wonder? Well then, farewell. That was actually hot and spicy. I did not know that happened because I've never finished Margaret's before, but wow, I'm glad I finished Margaret's. Oh, hello, Joshua Kuhn. I heard you're leaving tomorrow. You know, Kanji's been acting all sad and lonely lately. Shut up, you old bat. I told you not to speak to me that way. Anyway, have you told him about the, hand, uh, the handicraft class? Thank you for being such a role model for my son, Joshua Kuhn. Come visit here sometime, alright? Goodbye now. <sighs> you didn't hear what she said, did you? Handicraft class? Uh... 
see a bunch of customers like those knitted dolls we sold and they asked me how to make them so I'm gonna hold classes on how to do it lap it up why don't you senpai it was my decision though if people want to learn and I can teach them hell why not you know I'm still kind of embarrassed though but uh it kind of feels good to do something for other people <laughs> it's only because of you that I could face up to who I am senpai thank you very much kanji has a refreshing smile on his face you feel a solid bond between you and kanji are you gonna say goodbye to the others later well it ain't like this is the last time we'll see each other our friendship ain't just on the surface funny how we got the murder case to thank for that we well, put an end to that stuff right adachi's in the slammer and the fog is all cleared up it's all thanks to you senpai yo senpai when you go don't turn back around okay see ya Whoa, Joshua Kuhn. You caught me off guard. <laughs> oh, um, I was just thinking of you and you suddenly showed up, so... Chie is laughing, embarrassed. Tomorrow's the day, huh? I thought a lot about you and I decided to come here. I was thinking, what can I do for you? And I figured crying or feeling sad about you leaving wasn't it. So I made up my mind. I'm going to show you what you've taught me. I bought a book. Because <gasps> I taught you how to read. Wait, no, I didn't. It's called How to Become a Police Officer. I told you I wanted to become strong so I could protect what matters most to me, right? Well, I wanted to protect this town. We all worked hard to win this peace. I want to keep it this way. You can't be certain that no you can't be certain that no incident like this will ever happen again, right? This is where all my best friends are. It's where I met you. So I thought maybe I'd become a cop and have Dojima-san put me through the ringer. Chie is smiling cheerfully. So go home proud. We'll be fine here. Come back anytime. We'll all be waiting for you. You feel a tight bond with Chie. You still have to say goodbye to everyone else, right? Go ahead. Go. Chie is smiling sadly. Inaba Municipal Hospital. You overhear two nurses talking. Have you heard about Uhara-san? They seem to be talking about Sayoko. She joined some volunteer organization and went to Africa. Africa? I never thought she'd be the kind of person who would go there. Well, she seemed to be taking her job really seriously towards the end of her time here. She even studied during break. Do you remember when we were talking about the rumors of the Midnight Channel? She wasn't interested at all. Oh, I remember those rumors. Now that I know where they started. But yeah, now that you mention it, Uhara-san was never around when we were chatting about them. She was studying some foreign language, wasn't she? She was trying to learn English and some African languages, too. She read a lot of medical books, as well. I see, but why Africa? Why did she join a volunteer organization? What's the point? I'd rather marry a guy, raise kids, and be an ordinary housewife. That's what I used to think, too, but... Watching Uhara-san uh, kind of made me feel different about it. She did seem to have a boyfriend, though. A very young one, too. Oh, it must have been that kid who was working here part-time. I don't know the details, but he seemed to really mean something to her. She once told me that she was trying to do her best to live up to him. Do her best, eh? I feel I have to try harder, too. Yeah, I'm starting to see where she was coming from. Let's get back to work and do our best. It seems that Sayoko is working hard in a foreign country. Even though Sayoko is gone, her life here has changed people for the better. You feel a close bond between Sayoko and yourself. You decide to go back to town. Whoa! <laughs> What a coincidence. We were just talking about you. Why don't you join us, man? Well, 
You see, we started talking about whether or not all the crazy stuff that happened here was really over, and we were consoling each other about you leaving tomorrow. Why you gotta blurt that stuff out? That's embarrassing, man. To be honest, though, I did want to see you one last time, but I figured you'd be too busy. The next thing I know, you walk right in. It's like, man, I was being thoughtful for nothing. You shared a joyful moment with Ko and Daisuke. Oh, while you're here, let me tell you something. After I graduate, I think I'm going to go to college overseas. Not only does it sound like a blast, but I think it'll look good on my resume when I join the society, you know? I figure that'll help out the Ichijo family, too. Come on, you're not doing this for your family. I know, it's for my own sake. It's not for the family that took me in, or because I'm their first son. I want to support the family in my own way. I don't need to be the head in order to do that. That's why I think it'll be cool to study overseas. I'm sure I'll learn all kinds of things I couldn't over here. <laughs> of course, Daisuke is going to be a loner. <laughs> Not really. No matter where in the world all of us are, it won't matter. Friends are still friends, even when you can't see each other all the time. What? <sighs> Those were some touching words, man. To tell you the truth, I had a hard time just thinking about how to start this conversation. I was even thinking about hopping onto the train Joshua will be on tomorrow, so I could tell him all about it. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a bad idea. Why don't we go get some ramen? Um, Joshua, you can come back and visit anytime you want, man. This is your hometown now, too, yeah, you know? You feel a close bond between Ko, Daisuke, and yourself. I'm sure you've got other people to say your goodbyes to. We can see you off tomorrow, but uh, we'll always be friends. We'll always be friends too. Hey, don't steal my lines. I'm gonna make you eat pickled bamboo shoots. Yo! Yo, Joshua. Sensei, I'm super duper happy that you came to see me. going around saying goodbye, huh? What did you think of the sleepy, peaceful version of Inaba? It must seem weird for you. Huh, I wonder why it began just as you arrived here. Remember that first time, Sensei and Yosuke braving the TV world alone? Boy, I feel so nostalgic. Yeah, ever since then, it was just one surprise after another. Hmm, I can't imagine how it's going to be like living here without you. A quiet, peaceful town with no need to use our personas anymore? I can't imagine it either. That's right. We were right in the middle of that case when you came over to this side. A lot of stuff's happened. Facing my true self and you and me got into a fight too. Yosuke, did you smack Sensei? Oh, how reckless. Of course, moron. Best friends gotta fight sometimes to be best friends. Why didn't you say so earlier? Sensei, bring it on. Let's fight. Don't hurt him, man. He's gotta get on that train tomorrow. Sensei, you're really leaving, huh? I'm glad I met you and Yosuke. You two completely changed my life. And Nana-chan, Yuki-chan, and the others, too. They all helped me. They gave life to me. Life? Come on, man. You were the one who wanted to change. That's why you tried so hard to make it happen. Thank you so much, Sensei and Yosuke. I love you. Love is kind of strong. I'll take off my outfit if you want. Let's not... You feel a solid bond between you, Yosuke, and Teddy. By the way, is it okay for you to chill here? Don't you have somewhere to go? Like meeting someone? You want Teddy to come with you? <sighs> no, I think Teddy has to work. The Yamagi Inn. 
Welcome to... Hmm? Joshua Kuhn. Oh, that's right. You're leaving tomorrow. Thanks for coming to see me before you leave. I'm very happy. It means a lot to me. I... I was thinking of spending today as just another day. Helping with the housework, taking a long bath, and going to sleep. So I can... I can say goodbye without crying. But I felt miserably. I kept thinking about you. And on top of that, here you are, right in front of me. You're not helping at all. You're so mean. That's it. I'm leaving town with you tomorrow. <laughs> Just kidding. For now. You know, after I decided to stay here and become the manager, I realized how afraid I was. Whether I can meet all the responsibilities, whether I'll be able to support the whole staff on my own. I never thought of things like that, but I've made my decision. Now I have to make an honest attempt at it. I'll do my best to overcome the fear. And you'll be in my heart while I do, Joshua Kuhn. We'll be together, even when we're apart. I promise I won't turn away from my problems and fears. I'm going to meet every challenge head on, no matter how hard it seems. Remember what Amano Sigari said? If mankind so wishes, I will return at any time. That's not what I wish for. I'll face myself, no matter what happens. Thank you. Joshua Kuhn, thank you. I will always love you. You feel a solid bond between you and Yukiko. Um, well, I, I should get back to work. I'll see you later. I'll see you tomorrow.